Don't worry, love. I'm happy to clean up after Halloween. I'll just put this pumpkin away somewhere safe and... Whoa. Oh, hi. You caught me making a mess and getting my spouse mad at me. Speaking of marital strife, let's talk about Batman, The Long Halloween. Hello, welcome to Comic Tropes, I'm your host Chris. This week we're going to talk about a crime comic set deeply within the world of superheroes. My patrons voted on this one, we're going to talk about Batman The Long Halloween. Now, of all the superheroes out there, Batman is probably the closest to the detectives that existed before superheroes in things like magazines and dime store pulp novels. So Batman himself is an evolution of that idea. He may wear the costume of a superhero, but he operates as a detective. He doesn't have any superpowers. And the fact is, in The Long Halloween, Batman actually does not solve the crime, the central murder mystery at the heart of this story. Why is that? Well, it's because even though the title is Batman The Long Halloween, Batman is not the protagonist of this story. In fact, he's a foil to the actual protagonist, and that's Harvey Dent, because this story is the origin of Two-Face, a villain born from a good man. So, let's dig in. The Long Halloween is a murder mystery, asking the question of who is the mysterious killer Holiday, who strikes throughout the year on a holiday each month. The story takes place across 13 issues, from one Halloween to the following year, and in between documents the early days of Batman's career, set just after the famous story Batman Year One by Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. Batman's never-ending quest to rid Gotham City of crime leads to him making allies, such as Captain Jim Gordon in the police, and now District Attorney Harvey Dent. This new triumvirate vows to bend the rules, but not break them, to take down organized crime, represented by Carmine Falcone and his family. The imagery used to represent the Falcones includes direct references to The Godfather and The Godfather II, movies about an organized crime family. It's shorthand to let us, the reader, know that the enemies are traditional and old-fashioned. It shouldn't be a surprise that the book contains homages to film, since writer Jeff Loeb got his start as a screenwriter before breaking into comics. But The Long Halloween is all about balance, and how Batman's arrival to take down the overwhelming crime problems in Gotham has tipped the scales. In response to Batman's arrival, supervillains show up. Each of Batman's classic rogues shows up throughout the story, from Joker to Catwoman to Riddler. Falcone calls them freaks and detests them. Batman refuses to believe that his presence escalates things, but the arrival of so many theatrical villains in such a short time seems more than a coincidence. And while this story shows us Batman doing detective work and Bruce Wayne living his life, it equally shows the home life of Harvey Dent, Jim Gordon, Carmine Falcone. Why is this? Because each of these men are making sacrifices at home to further their career, their goals. And some of them, like Jim Gordon, seem to have struck a balance. They seem to have made it work. The others struggle. Harvey Dent is ultimately our protagonist because he wants something, to take down organized crime, and he's proactive about it. Falcone is the antagonist, doing everything he can to maintain the status quo. But they are two sides of the same coin. Harvey's wife, Gilda, is concerned that work keeps him away from her. Harvey acknowledges this, but it's still a problem. Falcone, meanwhile, also ignores family, but makes no effort to change. Carmine calls his son Alberto the good son and won't allow him to be a part of the family business, despite Alberto's constant requests to help. Carmine dismissively tells him not to worry about such things. Both of these men end up creating Holiday. The identity of Holiday is at the core of this story. Holiday appears in each issue to kill people connected to organized crime. The killer uses a simple 22 pistol at close range and leaves behind a token representing the holiday, from pumpkins, to Father's Day ties, to Valentine's chocolates. 
each time we see Holiday. The book switches to a black and white palette, with the exception of blood and the Holiday tokens left behind. It's a wonderful visual touch, easy to do in comics, but effective. The book features Batman being a detective, but he ultimately never solves the case or stops the murders. He consults with the imprisoned criminal Calendar Man, who also commits crimes on holidays. Calendar Man is normally a bit of a joke villain, but here he's creepy, and there are visual touches to remind us of Hannibal Lecter's glass prison from Silence of the Lambs. Calendar Man surmises Holiday could be a man or a woman, and he seems to possibly know who it is, but he never reveals it to Batman. Batman's work takes down villains like the Joker and Scarecrow, but he cannot deduce the identity of Holiday. Throughout the book, suspicion mounts that it could be Harvey Dent killing these criminals. Harvey certainly has motive, since he's obsessed with taking down the Falcone family. And he has opportunity, with his whereabouts unaccounted for. He's done some questionable stuff. He showed no remorse for the first victim, Johnny Vitti. He helped Batman burn down a warehouse of Falcone's money. But is he a killer? For most of the book, Batman doesn't think so. He begins the book saying, I believe in Gotham City. When the mob retaliates against Dent and blows up his house, Batman's narration still tells us that he won't give up on his convictions. I believe in Jim Gordon. I believe in Harvey Dent. I believe in Gotham City. The book ends with Harvey's wife, Gilda, saying, I believe in Harvey Dent. This is well after he's been transformed into Two-Face. But who is Holiday really? By the end of the story, Alberto Falcone claims to be Holiday after killing his father's rival, Sal Maroni. Alberto previously seemed to be killed on Valentine's Day, but when we go back to look at the panels, we can see that there may not have actually been a second person, and that Alberto was faking his death. Does this add up? Is his motive truly strong enough that he wanted his father to notice him? Well, no. He killed Moroni, but that's it. We'll circle back to the identity of Holiday. Because while the engine of the story is figuring out who is Holiday, the story also has plenty of time to analyze the lives of its characters. Uh, this includes Bruce Wayne and his burgeoning relationship with Selina Kyle, Catwoman, uh, as well as the home life of Captain Jim Gordon and his happy relationship with his wife. Both of these elements would later prove to be fuel for stories that capitalized on the long Halloween. Selena's story is represented through her actions as Catwoman. Catwoman is constantly spying on Carmine Falcone throughout the story. Does she just want to rob him? It appears to be more than that. In fact, it ties back into the ongoing themes of family. Catwoman is trying to figure out if Carmine Falcone is her father. This is ultimately not answered in this story. The dangling thread was picked up in Catwoman, When in Rome, by the same creative team as this book, writer Jeff Loeb and artist Tim Sale. The Long Halloween also provided a lot of the material adapted into the film The Dark Knight by Christopher Nolan. We have Jim Gordon's life with his wife and son and his workaholic nature. And we have the creation of Two-Face and Harvey's campaign slogan, I Believe in Harvey Dent. This book is about the creation of Harvey's sinister alter ego, Two-Face, and it's foreshadowed often. Artist Tim Sale draws Harvey Dent with a shadow across half his face, implying a darker nature within. And Harvey is often written with dialogue about things like second chances. Harvey gets his iconic coin from his father, who we learn is insane and lives in an asylum. The Holiday Killer uses a 22. Is this a reference to Two-Face's obsession with the number two? Not quite. Ultimately, Harvey is able to get Sal Maroney in court, but Maroney throws acid in Dent's face, scarring him and unleashing the anger Harvey's kept bottled up. Harvey escapes the hospital and encounters Solomon Grundy in the sewers. Grundy is a zombie, and Harvey wonders aloud if a man can have two lives. Previously, Dent went undercover and told Batman he can't imagine how someone can masquerade as a second person. But now, Harvey is two people. He's Harvey Dent, district attorney, and Two-Face, a violent man who is finally able to kill Carmine Falcone. 
Calendar Man brilliantly states that he is now Har V. Dent, referencing both the dichotomy and the legal background of Dent. Two-Face takes down Falcone by organizing the supervillains of Gotham, those who Falcone calls freaks. After he accomplishes his mission, he allows himself to be arrested, but the trio of Gordon, Batman, and Dent is now broken. Dent tells his former allies that there were always two holidays. Batman believes this to mean Harvey Dent and Two-Face were each holiday, but he's wrong. Harvey Dent was holiday, but there was a second person, and not the imposter Alberto. And this is where I'll give you a spoiler warning. The next paragraph I'm going to discuss uh, reveals who the holiday killer actually was. Uh, it's only about a paragraph, so you can skip ahead to this time code if you just want to hear the rest of my thoughts overall on this book. But I do want to go into spoilers. This book came out from 96 through 97, so I think 20 plus years is a good amount of time to have given people the opportunity to have read this book. If you haven't, go ahead and read it come back, but if you have, I just want to analyze a little bit more about who Holiday is. Let's do it. In the final moments of the final issue, we see someone throwing the disguise and weapons of Holiday into a furnace. It was Gilda Dent. Gilda was so desperate to get her husband back, she started taking out organized crime to reduce her husband's workload. She came up with the holiday-themed killer to make people think that the killer was someone extraordinary, one of the freaks. So when Harvey said there were two holiday killers, he means himself and Gilda. Gilda was responsible for the first three killings, and then Harvey took over. Now, realistically, this is a little implausible. I mean, these two never talked to each other about being holiday, so how would Gilda know when to stop being Holiday? How would Harvey know exactly when to pick up? It doesn't really make sense, but thematically, it does make sense. Thematically, it's about two people finding the balance in their marriage and finding a way to reconnect, ironically, by becoming killers. The story ended up becoming what many consider the definitive Two-Face story, the same way a book like The Killing Joke is the definitive Joker story. It features themes of balance and duality, which are entirely appropriate for Two-Face's fractured nature. What wasn't necessarily represented was for Batman to play such a passive role, or for family to be such important elements. The story is respectful of Two-Face's past, including an allusion to his original version. In 1942, Batman creators Bob Kane and Bill Finger introduced Two-Face in Detective Comics number 66. He was a district attorney scarred by a mobster, and decides to become Two-Face, deciding his crimes with the flip of a coin. He wasn't as deep as the Harvey Dent in this story that's a friend and ally to Gordon and Batman. His name was Harvey Apollo Kent, which was changed to Dent to make sure readers didn't assume a connection with Superman's alter ego, Clark Kent. But in Long Halloween, Harvey's wife Gilda refers to her husband as Her Apollo, a clever nod to his origins. At the time, Two-Face appeared in just three stories in the 40s and two in the 50s, before being left behind, until writer Denny O'Neill brought him back in 1971 as a more serious threat for Batman. But while the groundwork of Dent working for Gordon was laid in Batman Year One, the long Halloween defines the character. So, with all that said, is this a flawless book? Well, no, not in my opinion. While there's a lot to like, and I definitely respect this story, I have a few issues that keep it from being a personal favorite. Let me go into it. The first is a matter of personal taste. Tim Sale's artwork is certainly unique, and the storytelling is clear but he draws his characters as caricatures. There's something weird about his Batman around the nose and cowl to my eye. He emphasizes everyone's philtrum, the divot above the lip. He gives Batman the physique of a blown out steroid freak. He gives Joker way too many teeth. And I understand that's intentional to create a mood. There is a consistent tone. So I don't dislike it all, but it's not my favorite. I will say, that his Two-Face is suitably disturbing. As far as Loeb's scripting, I give him credit for laying out so many themes like family and duality, the old versus the new, balance. It's very good. But the story is also front-end loaded. 
The first issue is fantastic. It sets up a mystery, introduces a lot of characters, and establishes the setting. It's efficient. The following three issues are important and move at a great pace. But by the time you're going through Mother's Day and Father's Day and dealing with subplots like Poison Ivy hypnotizing Bruce Wayne, you may feel that the mystery is getting backgrounded a bit too much. Some of the subplots are great. I liked it when Falcone grudgingly hires the Riddler to try to figure out who Holiday is. I like the reveal that Bruce Wayne's father, Thomas, had once privately operated on Carmine's father, linking the families in the past. But too much of it feels like filler until the final two issues where the mystery wraps up with a bang. Ultimately, I do give this book a recommend, but it isn't in my personal top 10 favorite Batman stories. I think it's a good story with a lot of interesting elements. I think that it shows us the end of organized crime in a Batman story. And so it's gritty, it's grounded, it's still a mystery. I like that. I like that it subverts some of my expectations because Batman does not really solve the case. He thinks he's solved it, but he really doesn't. About the, the main thing he does, the, the only important thing, is he takes down Alberto at one point, and he does that while dressed up as a Gotham City police officer, and at some point he takes off, like, his helmet, and his cowl is still there. I don't know how he fit his ears under that helmet, but, you know, safety first. Uh, so I do appreciate it on a lot of levels. I do. Uh, it's not flawless, but it is interesting. I wish more Batman stories were this grounded and dealt with mysteries. Batman is a detective. I think he works very well as a detective. So I like that element. Anyway, uh, no fan art this week, so sorry, nothing there to uh, share this week. That's totally fine. Uh, I appreciate my patrons. Thank you so much. You guys support me, and you voted on which topics I'll cover for this month, including this topic. Uh, you overwhelmingly voted for it, and while at first I wasn't necessarily super excited to cover this, I ended up appreciating this story on a lot more levels than I originally did. So I actually ended up having a really good time writing this review and doing this. So thank you, actually. I, I gained a newfound appreciation for this story. Um, I like it more than I did before. I really do. Once I analyzed it, I was like, nope, there, there, are, there are quite a few layers to this story. That's important. So uh, we will be doing crime for the next two weeks. Uh, then I'm headed out to Japan. Uh, Going to do some stuff for you out there. So we've got some very exciting stuff coming up for the channel. Uh, thank you so much. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you know when a new video comes out. That, that's really important. Uh, and, you know, I always appreciate it when you guys share this stuff on social media. I really do. So thank you so much. Until next time, keep reading comics.